Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this um, particular program, we will um, talk about higher education and people with special needs. Uh, but <laughs> before that, we would like to say special thanks to Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others for sponsoring and partnering with us on this program. And our one of our partners on, on this program today is um, Community College of Vermont, um, which we will be speaking about higher education and people with special needs. And with that, we would like to uh, welcome Kelly Young, the ADA, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act coordinator and uh, coordinator for special needs services at Community College of Vermont. Welcome, <laughs> Kelly. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence and, and Arlene, for having me. It's good to be yeah, back. Did I say it? Did I say it right? ADA coordinator? Sure. So the, the, the little bit of new terminology, um, our, our roles have shifted a bit. I am now a, a dedicated student advisor. I work with students in our TRIO program, which is um, students who are first generation um, uh, from you know limited income means and or have a documented disability. I'm also an accessibility services coordinator. So yes, I work with students who have documented disabilities to access their education at CCB. Okay, so what, um, what are the missions and goals of uh, Community College of Vermont and working with students with disabilities? How, why is it so important for students with disabilities or special needs to um, to go to college or pursue higher education? Yeah, great, thank you for that question. So the, the college's mission for all of Vermont is to uh, support students in um, accessing higher education, affording higher education, and being successful in meeting their goals. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for all Vermonters. And you know, we certainly recognize that some Vermonters um, uh, have different abilities and may have barriers to accessing their education created by a disability that um, that we can and we can mitigate those barriers um, and we we want to mitigate barriers for all Vermonters and so for Vermonters with special needs um, we have specific ways of doing that at CCB yep okay so um, explain <laughs> some of the ways that you help students with special needs um, access those services and you know um, 
why are, and then the second part to this is why are students with special needs sometimes afraid to go to college? Yeah, okay, great. So, um, I mean, I think, I think Vermonters, all different kinds of Vermonters can be afraid to go to college for various reasons. And, and sometimes that's um, messages they grew up with, you know, college isn't for people like me, or, um, you know, somehow I've been told in my life, I'm not smart or good enough to do it, or I'm not the right kind of person to be in college, or, geez, I'm so busy managing you know, work or appointments or other things on my plate, I don't know how to fit it in, or I'm not sure I can be successful, right? And so there's lots of reasons that, that students, including students with special needs might be afraid to go to college. Um, and I think, um, I think there's a, a culture shift happening right now in this country and in this state around um, seeing people with special needs as college students, just like anybody else is, might be a college mm -hmm. student, right? That that might be a shift that's happening, and it's a um, it's one that CCV values and, and would like to contribute to. So, um, the ways did did I answer that part of your question? Okay, mm -hmm. great. Okay, and then how we help students access the services. So right from the point of the application, we do ask students if they have a documented disability, and if they answer yes to that question, we send them out information about how to access and how to get started with accessing our services. There's a self-disclosure form they can fill out. There's a list of who the um, accessibility coordinators are like me across the state and how to reach them um, to set up an appointment um, and to start the process of setting up accommodations. Uh, again, to mitigate any barriers created by a disability. So um, if, if students don't say yes to that question, they might not realize they have a documented disability or they might not think it's important at the time they apply. Um, if, they, if they bring that up with a faculty member or a staff member or an advisor, then we also help them start that process of, of getting accommodation set up. So at, at any point that they disclose um, having a documented disability, then that we kind of take it from there and, and get them the information and services they need. Okay. Um, Arlene, did you still want to, want to ask questions? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, take your time. I'm trying to say, okay. I know special needs have challenges. Does that affect them from going to college? Sorry, Arlene, I didn't hear that question very well. Uh, I'll repeat it. Um, it, 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 does sometimes do so, sometimes when a ch when a person has a disability, does it in affect them sometimes going to college? Is it more difficult it, it for challenges? Does it affect them? Is it more yeah. difficult for students with disabilities to to go to college, or has CCV made it easier? Let's put it that way. Yeah, no, I think there can be some real there can be some real barriers um, created by a disability, depending on what it is, right? So if somebody has um, uh, visual impairment or is blind, right, then, then we need to be uh, providing accessible ways for them to um, access the, the courses and content. And we do that um, through, you know, uh, the latest and greatest in, in online technologies for accessibility, as well as in person. Um, we hire interpreters for folks who uh, have a hearing impairment or are deaf. Um, we um, we also, you know, students might have uh, a mental health disability or a learning disability or, uh, a, you know, another a physical disability that has other needs associated with it. And so we meet with students regularly to discuss what their, you know, what their documentation says, what they know about their disability, what kinds of accommodations might mitigate those barriers so that they have equal access to learning mm. and then put those accommodations in place. And those can look like all different kinds of things. Um, depending on what the disability issue is and how it's impacting the student in the learning environment. Okay, mm -hmm. Arlene, go, go ahead with some other questions. Um, <coughs> take I your know, time, take your time. I know certain, why are, why are special needs people afraid to go to college? Why are they afraid? Go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, I think what, I, what I've heard from students is some of the things I mentioned before, um, which I think is some of the messages that that folks with special needs might get growing up, other other Vermonters might get as well. You know, things like, um, I don't know if I can do it. I've never been told I'm college material. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm smart enough. I've, I've been told I'm not smart. Um, you know, those kinds of messages. Um, nobody in my family's ever been to college. 
And those kinds of messages are not unique to people with special needs, but I think mm -hmm. they're common, unfortunately, for people with special needs. Okay, um, so let's let's go through some of the new things. You, you, uh, your website is wonderful. Uh, oh, good. It, it, it's it's um, a lot of websites. I mean, they're supposed to be, especially with a lot of colleges now uh, going online, which is a little strange for people. If people are used to in in person now everything has been switched online so two part question how has mm -hmm. your website changed personally i think it's better for people with um visual impairment because you can like zoom in, in everything but yeah. then how has ccv made the switch or how hard it, if at all how hard has it been during COVID, you know, because COVID, a lot of things were closed. People were afraid to go into buildings. So how has CCV kind of take that leap? Yeah. Uh, so if taking that leap, if I'm saying it right, taking yes. that leap and making it so much easier, because I know I notice now CCV has a whole bunch of grants for yep. students who want to pursue college and, you know, have been afraid to, oh, they can't afford it such and such um yes. so go ahead yeah so I think, i'm sorry you know, for the big question <laughs> well it, it, it did all kind of come at once at ccv right so changes there were planned changes to our website and our portal um uh to and and honestly with our online canvas sites um to um those were already planned to make the user experience easier for all everybody including people with special needs so that was already underway and then the pandemic hit fortunately ccv has a long long experience with teaching and learning online mm -hmm. we've been helping learners do that for i don't know 25 years or something a long time right and we were one of the first ones to head in that direction in vermont and maybe the first i don't know and so um so there was a lot of experience already with teaching and learning online the the challenge was that a whole bunch of faculty and students two years ago had to mid semester what drop do you mean, everything. What do you in mean person. by mid? What do you mean by mid semester? I'm sorry. Well, right. Uh, I think it was around this time two years ago that we learned about the pandemic really hitting hard in Vermont, and we had to tell everybody, "Hey, a week from today there will be no more in person classes, and everybody's going to go online." Mm. So we had to shut everything down in person, and a whole bunch of learners and a whole bunch of faculty who intentionally were taking classes in person instead of online because they learned better that way or they taught better that way had to suddenly shift to be online yeah. now what we did with most of those classes was provide a synchronous learning opportunity okay so define, instead of define synchronous yeah yeah so most classes up until that time were what we call asynchronous so there were um, assignments and discussion forums and deadlines throughout the week but you could you could um, post to those any time up until the deadline. Right. So you might have a discussion taking place all week, but you had to post your first post by the end of Wednesday, and you had to post responses to five classmates by the end of Friday, and you had to read the rest of it and make one more post on Sunday or something like that. So people were posting at all different times, but they were reading and responding to each other, mm -hmm. but all at a different days and times. With a synchronous option, that means there are online components that are like that, but there's also a live class through Zoom once a week. So uh, most of those, yeah, yeah. So most of those classes that had to go from in person to online kept the same day and time of the meeting. They just moved it to Zoom. Mm -hmm. So a lot of students and faculty had to get well. A lot of faculty had to get Zoom accounts. A lot of students and faculty needed equipment for Zoom to work. And needed, they didn't have computers. Uh, a lot of students taking in-person classes um, have computers and some don't. Ah. Um, a lot of them have good internet access at home and some don't. Um, yeah. Many don't didn't at the time have computers with um, cameras, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. um, so there, there was a lot, there was a huge a learning curve, a lot of flexibility for faculty and mm -hmm. students during that time and a lot of resources. How do we get computers you know, cameras, et cetera. How do we get these resources into students' hands so that and, and faculty hands so they can be successful in this rest of the semester and provide mm -hmm. flexibility through the end of the semester? So if somebody, you know, could only participate through audio phone on the Zoom meeting, well, that's how it had to be, right? So um, 
So there was a, a, a big pivot during that time. And, and then classes stayed online. I think one of the big, um, uh, you yeah, know, what's silver the, yeah, the big, I'm sorry, the big misconception about like online learning, you know, is there any misconceptions with that and students with disabilities? Like um, not being I, able, not being able to. Yeah, uh, you know, I, it's interesting. I don't know how many students um, with disabilities were taking classes online before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that. That's a really great question. I'm guessing, I mean, I think what happened for a lot of people who thought they needed to take classes in person, once mm -hmm. they moved online because they had to, um, you know, we, we, first of all, we, we really supported faculty in making sure their online classes were really clear that, that mm -hmm. they provided regular access to students who might have questions mm -hmm. and, right. um, you know, that those, those experiences could be successful for all kinds of learners. And so right. there was a big push on the faculty side as well as, you know, supportive resources. So now yeah. all students, regardless of where, how they're taking classes, synchronous, asynchronous, in-person, whatever, they all get automatically registered their first semester at CCB, not only for an orientation, but for an orientation to how the online course experience works. And they all have an opportunity to meet with an advisor to talk about, um, you know, what their comfort level is with those things, but to check into their course sites before the semester starts to make sure they understand how to navigate them and use them. Um, and then, of course, there are there are advisors like like me who are um, now dedicated to working with um, students with special needs who are using, who are accessing right. services, accessibility mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. to, because, to uh, example, talking about internet, if you there's a lot of um, people that are, we've spoken to that are like up in rural Vermont yes. and don't even have access to a computer, or they might be low income. Or yep. not realize, okay, I can get a computer from the school, or get, or, it, uh, or what they call yep. lending how library. Can, you know, how, where, where, they, how how do they get computers if they can't afford it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. That first semester, we were sending out maps of of hotspots in Vermont, so people could get their laptops and sit in the you know parking lot of a local store or library to be able to access internet. It was you know. Because um, people, but, I'm sorry, people in Cabot, for example, when you're like way up, you don't have access. So yeah, yeah those students were, were driving down to the Marshfield store and using the, that store's internet to be able to access their classes, right? Like that's what was going on. Wow. But then soon there, we, we did, we did um, have some resources to support right away. Again, making sure students had some um, ways to access computing resources. And then since then, there have been more um, for, for anybody to be able to access um, what are called CARES grants. And this is mm -hmm. federal funding um, available, pandemic relief funding available for all students um, to request funds. And many students have used those funds uh, for computing resources, whether it's internet in, upgraded internet access, you know, any internet access at all, or computing resources they need, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then also some students who um, have special needs join the TRIO program. And that's what, a program. What for, is that? What is the TRIO yeah, program? That's another federally funded program. And it is uh, primarily for first generation people who are the first in their families to pursue college. Their parents, uh, people who raised them, didn't, didn't earn a bachelor's degrees at, at least. Um, and they are also either um, low income or they have a documented disability or both. Mm -hmm. And we've got, you know, there's probably. I don't know. There's probably over a thousand students who are eligible for that program. We can only serve a couple of hundred. And so our 225, something like that. And so we um, we really look for students who want to take advantage of a more dedicated advising relationship, a more engaged advising relationship through the college, uh, because there are dedicated advisors like me, as well as trio coaches. Um, we make success plans with those students and follow them through. We make sure they're doing all right all the time in their classes and see, you know, how they can leverage um partnering with their advisor and coach and resources of the college to be successful. So some students with special needs join that program. And there are a couple of other programs as well for students with special learning needs. So is the mentoring program through CCV part of the TRIO or is it too different? Um, do you mean the Learning Center mentoring? No. Um, college Compass mentoring? Co uh, college, yeah. College Compass, okay. I'm sorry. So, is, 
Go ahead. Yeah, I'll talk. There's a there's a few uh, mentoring kinds of programs. There's four actually that I can think of. So one is trio. So if you're a trio student, and you are um, struggling with the content of a class, right? To, to understand the content of a class, you can get academic mentoring through Trio. Mm -hmm. There's also academic mentoring through our learning centers. There are three learning centers in person, and um, some of us, some of those learning so that's centers, Montpelier, one Montpelier. that's Montpelier, Winooski, and Rutland. Okay. And I believe, at least in Montpelier, we are starting to also. Um, have students access those those mentoring uh, opportunities through Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I've got a Newport student who's going to, you know, log into the learning center later today through Zoom yeah. in Montpelier. So um, that's starting to expand the reach of those. Um, and th those those are for all students. The learning centers are for all students. And we also have a 24/7 tutor.com program for all students. There are a couple programs in addition to Trio. There are a couple of programs specific to um, students with special needs. And these are partnerships with Vogue Rehab. And in some cases, another partner. You said Vogue Higher Rehab, Ability. but before we began the show, you said Vogue Rehab changed names. Yeah, the, my, yeah, and I've been I've been out on vacation for a week and a half, and I think I've missed some, some things, but my understanding is Vogue Rehab is now called Higher Ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't know much about that change. I'm sorry about that. But in any case, we've had uh, for a number of years, we've had a program called Linking Learning to Careers. I think it's a grant that's wrapping up. So we're just coming to completion of that. Mm -hmm. um, but that that program provided um, some dedicated mentoring and additional funding for students who were um, just coming out of high school to begin college to try out college. And in some cases, you know, I have, I have a student who has been going full time and is going to graduate this semester with a degree and transfer on to another college to get a bachelor's. So right, in other words, wait a second. The, there are stories that I've seen on the news where students are in high school and then they graduate with both their high school diploma and college degree. Is that what you're talking about? That's called early college. Yeah. So there's a number of things. So students, um, all high school students in Vermont have access to two free classes um, through the dual enrollment program. Mm. In addition, students who are at career and technical education centers might get additional credits through what's, you know, through, through some other college credits. Mm -hmm. um, and then through linking learning to careers, students also have access to two additional vouchers for wow. free classes. And some of those students then went on to enroll as a uh, after high school in a degree program to complete. Mm -hmm. Now the early college program is doing your entire senior year at CCD or another college. And so you, you graduate. And if you took some dual enrollment classes, you know, you might graduate your high school with 36 college credits, not a full degree, but pretty, you know, pretty well on your way. Um, and many of those students stay. And some of those students, are using accessibility services, right? But it's not dedicated for those those students. Um, the programs we have really dedicated for students with special needs is again that linking learning to careers, which is wrapping up, I believe, and also a program, a newer program called College Compass. That is a partnership mm -hmm. between CCD yeah. and Higher Ability, formerly Voc Rehab, and College Steps. Now, College Steps provides real wraparound supports and services on residential campuses. Mm -hmm. So this was a new program to work with CCD and I believe others in the Vermont State College system on a, a paired back just the academic mentoring component because we're not a residential college. We're a commuter college, right? Mm -hmm. People either just zoom in or log into their online class or they show up once a week for a class on campus, right? Or a couple days a week for a couple different classes or classes in person are typically only one day a week. So um, this is a program that really just zeroes in on that, that mentoring piece, which might be academic support, it might be support with social communication, it might be support with understanding and following what's what's in that Canvas site online in that class. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, it's a four to 10 hours a week of support, depending on um, depending mm -hmm. on what the student needs and how many classes yeah. they're in. Um, okay, so, so let's talk about, uh, and, but uh, before we get to more questions, Arlene, did you wanna ask any more? Yes. Um, <laughs> um, Take your time. Take your time. With a, with a Take your time. Say to have 
they have trouble accessing their textbook. What? How do they do that? Yeah. How does uh, when when working with students with disabilities, um, does CCP make it easier to to get things from the bookstore? How does that work with uh, students and online learning? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And so. Um, it, it, there's a, a number of things that are available to all students and then something specific for students with special needs. So um, textbooks come in all different formats. Many faculty are using what's called open education resources, which are um, videos, articles, websites, et cetera, that they're posting to their Canvas site. And they're using closed captioning and they're using you know, those sort of accessibility tools built in as they go. Mm -hmm. um, and so students don't have to purchase a textbook. They may or may not, depending on, on their experience, um, a student with special needs might need support with downloading a screen reader program. There's free ones available online, or they can go to the Technology Tryout Center through the state of Vermont and Waterbury and borrow um, a, you know, a natural reader, souped up version of natural reader um, to, to have that kind of text to voice option. Um, and so some students might need support with accessing those kinds of resources so that they can uh, hear those those online resources or um, otherwise access them. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, some some uh, books have an ebook option mm -hmm. and very often there's an audio option built into those. Yeah. And um, and then uh, and then some are just there's only a hard copy available. And sometimes yeah. students want to have a hard copy, but they also want the audio at the same time. And so yeah. when there's no ebook option or audio option regularly available, or students want the hard copy plus the audio, then CCB yeah. can um, can tran can offer a, an alternative option to students. So we can sort of translate those. We either have relationships with a publisher where we can get an audio file, or we can get a PDF to send to the student that can run through a screen reader. Um, or we've got a program up in Winooski. We kind of, kind of have to get the textbook in advance and send it up mm -hmm. to Winooski so they can run it through this program mm -hmm. to create that audio file. Mm -hmm. um, but there are those options for students as well. Now, now um, if someone is blind, can what's they that? get the if, if you ever have a blind student? Yes. Yep. Yes. So how, so, how does, so how does CCV help students with visual impairments, uh, you know, more so? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I have, I have had very little experience in this area um, because we just haven't had very many students. We had some deaf students in Montpelier, but while I've been here, there have not been students with visual impairment, very many visual impairments. Um, and so, but my understanding is for students with significant visual impairments um, and or who are blind that they're, you know, that part of our services are uh, translating materials into Braille into an accessible format for uh, people with visual disabilities. Many people with visual disabilities, um, the online format works great because as you noted, um, Lawrence, you can really zoom in. You can zoom very in. It, it's a, a lot of colleges are, or their systems are not, you know, I mean, no system is 100%. Right. No computer is 100%. No, no computer program, computers crash like people sometimes, but, <laughs> you yes. know, so nothing yeah. is 100%. And what I like about CCVs, um, uh, everything is like huge. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, yeah. you can, yeah. you know, yeah. tweak videos if you have to look at a video. So yes, it, exactly. So it makes... And so, so I have had some students with actually pretty significant visual impairments, but they can they can still access, they can zoom things enough to be able to access what's there. Yeah. We've had to have some conversations. Sometimes faculty have classes set up in ways that, you know, they might be technically accessible, but they're not de facto actually accessible. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there needs to be a conversation about how a class is working with that student. Uh, but most of the time things are working pretty well for, for students with visual impairments. I just haven't, I haven't um, actually worked with translating materials to Braille, but I do know that service is available. Okay, so. now here's here's something interesting. Since, you, since CCV has changed a lot with websites and things, what is, for those that don't know, what, and I hope this question is not far-fetched, but what is a flex class? Because I've heard about that, and yes. um, you know, a lot of colleges are eight weeks, ten weeks, 
CCVs is 15 weeks, but what what is a flex class? And Great, yeah. great. I'm going to just start with an overview of all our options, right? So there's the 15-week class that might be face-to-face -face in person. It might be hybrid, which is partly in person, partly online. It might be fully online, asynchronous, right? Everybody's logging in at different days and times. Or it might be fully online that in addition has a synchronous live Zoom meeting once a week. Yeah. Right. On top of that, there are classes that might be accelerated. So they might be seven weeks for the first half or seven weeks mm. for the second half. Mm. Those are called accelerated online classes. And then, and then there's the flex format. So the flex format class takes place over the whole semester, but students can sign up for it up until I think, I don't know, week seven or week five, week seven or something, as long as there's still room. Um, so they're entering it all at different times and they have the whole semester to complete that course, but they're doing it at their own pace. So I have a student right now who hasn't even logged into their flex class because they have three weeks off from work and they're planning on doing that flex class during those three weeks. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there are other students who there's 15 modules in that class. So they're just doing one a week, you know, but there's no discussions with other students or typically there's very little discussion with other students because people are all over the map in terms of when they're accessing it, and when they're completing modules. Mm -hmm. um, so it's much more like an independent study with faculty engagement and support, but without sort of that other. So it's like an independent study degree or. or It's like an independent study or, or, a, st or a study at your own pace. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, talking about flex class. What is, uh, and I was researching it because, you know, I like finding digital badges or digital yes. certificate, digital badge. What the heck is that? Yeah, so this is sort of a new thing over the past, you know, bunch of years that has, has showed up. So a digital badge is um, a credential. So there's sort of outside organizations that say, okay, this set of content is something that, that we can badge. We can sort of say, this adds up to X, Y, or Z skill, right? And so if you take a workshop, there's a there's a series of, of three workshops, um, not gonna get them right, but personal, personal and professional effectiveness, um, critical and creative thinking, and maybe effective workplace communication. There's a couple of three, maybe three one credit flex classes. And if you complete all three, you get a, a digital badge in 21st century learning because the skills demonstrated in 21st century learning, you know, things like uh, collaborative learning and communication, leadership, um, working with uh, all kinds of people, diversity, you know, uh, a series of skills that add up to 21st century learning skills. And so if you complete all three of those, those one credit workshops, you get that digital badge. Um, there's others like, uh, I think it's internet marketing or something like that, that has its own badge attached to it. And so some of these, um, there are some um, sort of micro credentials, right? It's not a full certificate, it's not a degree, but maybe it's a, a series of, you know, nine to 12 credits that have badges associated with them. So they, they, you can get sort of a, a micro credential that says, hey, I've earned these three digital badges with this title on it. And now I'm going to work towards that certificate next, or now next I'm going to work towards that degree. Mm -hmm. So it's a way for students to um, build skills and, and micro credentials on their way to a larger credential, or just if they want to stop there with that piece. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, a digital badge is something you can post to a LinkedIn site. Um, it's something you can link onto a, an online resume. Um, it's something that demonstrates to employers and others, hey, I have this skill set, right? And it's separate, it's sort of industry credentials rather than an academic. I mean, it's both, right? Because you got it through an academic institution. So you got some you got some college credits for that. It right. also says, hey, here's this set of industry recognized skills that this person has as a result. Okay. Um, is there anything that we didn't we have a couple of minutes left? Is there anything we didn't add that is important? Yeah, you know, I think the only thing else I would mention is that um, you know, over the past couple of years, uh, the, the other big shift at CCV has been in how we have dedicated our roles. And so you guys know my role used to include advising all kinds of students and working with faculty and setting up the curriculum and doing a little of everything. And now my role is really focused. So there are people who are just advising. And within that pool, there are people like me who are really dedicated to working with students with special needs and students in the TRIO program, right? And so, um, 
And we've also uh, gotten all gotten trained in a coaching model. And so we're really able to partner with all students and in my case, students with special needs um, to think about how do I best prepare myself for this semester? What are the steps I need to take to make sure that on day one, I've got my textbooks, I know how to log in, I've got, I understand how my courses work, I understand what the resources are at CCV, and I know how to get help if I need it. Um, also, okay, I'm somebody who's always procrastinated. How do I get better at managing my time to make sure I meet those deadlines? Mm -hmm. Or geez, I'm, I'm balancing school and work and parenting or and lots of appointments. You know, how do I manage all that? Mm -hmm. Or, um, gosh, I'm taking classes online. I sort of feel really distant from everybody. How do I bridge that gap? You know, so, so advisors are able to partner with students to meet their goals and to overcome all kinds of barriers, right, that might get in the way for them, mm -hmm. some of which might be related to special needs and some of which might be related to something else. So I think that's an additional, um, for, from the student side, an additional piece that's really Great, and then on the on the curriculum side, there's lots of great stuff happening. Um, we've got a lot of two plus two arrangements where we have a um, an agreement with another college like UVM or Vermont Technical College or any of you know lots of different colleges, example, especially Vermont. Did, State didn't College you system. at one point in terms of your role, weren't you doing things with Johnson College? Did that change? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So that's that's now all at at Northern Vermont University. Right. So I, I'm no longer directly advise those students. But um, so anyway, there's lots of transfer agreements with lots of schools, mm -hmm. some of which are a, a two plus two agreement. Like you complete an associate's degree in X here and that translates all 60 credits towards a bachelor's degree in Y over at that college. Right. So those kinds of transfer pathways, transfer agreements. We also have Canvas sites for every degree program and certificate program. So if you are in a healthcare related certificate or degree, or you just want to be in that Canvas site and you're a non-degree student, but you're interested in healthcare, you can enroll in this Canvas site. And there's all kinds of webinars going on, faculty sharing their experience or somebody talking about, you know, pathways at the hospital coming to talk about the, the uh, ways that they support um, their employees in going to college and earning credentials and, and pathways to nursing or things like that. So all kinds of stuff gets posted there, as well as how do I complete my degree? How do I transfer onto other schools? All of it gets packaged into a Canvas site for students. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also all kinds of online ways for students to connect with each other outside of classes now as well. Our Student Advisory and Leadership Council is putting on social groups and, and common interest groups. A there's a coding corner for students who are all interested in coding, you know? Um, so, so there's a lot of great stuff happening at CCV right now. Okay. So um, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn. Arlene, did you want to ask any more questions before we end? I can't think of any. Okay. So we would like to thank um, Kelly Young and the uh, Community College of Vermont for joining us on this um, edition of Able to Learn. Um, what is your role again? You are... Uh, Kelly is the ADA coordinator and um, TRIO. So yep, TRIO and Accessibility Coordinator of Student Advising is my title. So I'm a Tri coordinator of student trio, advising. Uh, TRIO ADA coordinator and student, student advisor, advisor at the Community College of Vermont. We would like to thank her for joining us in this edition of Able Dinner and Air. And we would also like to add and thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, and many others, also including the Division for the Blind of Vermont, the Association for the Blind of Vermont, and many, many other um, supporters and sponsors for Ableton On Air. Thank you again, Kelly, for joining us on this edition of Ableton On Air. I am Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, 
New York Pirate Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.